You know, after spending five years on six continents looking at kind of the impacts of the food decisions that we make, I would have to say I feel so much hope and possibility in the area of food and agriculture. I spent over 20 years as, working as an environmental journalist offering all kinds of solutions across the board and this one feels rich, it feels delicious, it feels engaging and hopeful and yeah absolutely you know when you see kind of the growth of factory farms or you see these shifts in climate change policy it, it feels overwhelming and it feels like maybe we don't have a lot of agency here but but seeing the trajectory of the decisions that we make around the kinds of foods that we eat really um, enables me to see that that there's an opportunity for great change. You know, I don't want to discount the taste benefits because I think actually the way biodiversity in food and agriculture has been framed has often been about benefits that seem less tangible to to consumers, to eaters, to co producers that we're like we're a part of the system. But the thing that we, you know, the reasons we reach for food are because of deliciousness, because of symbolism, a connection a food may have to who we are, or because of nutritional value. But when we look at the reasons that most foods are bred and most foods are grown and proliferate, it's for yield. It's for um, resistant to environmental factors such as disease or pest resistance or drought tolerance, but these aren't the reasons that we reach for food. And I think actually by using flavor as a primary conduit, we actually offer a deeper opportunity for connection. So if I say to you, wow, hey, you know, when we grow something in this way, this particular way, it's less resource intensive. We use less water. Mm, that feels quite distant. I don't feel so engaged. If you say to me, we grew this particular food in a certain way, and wow, the taste is, is you know, is, is more delicious, the nutritional benefits are higher, that feels like a direct connection. And I, I don't want to say that we're, you know, purely kind of self-focused beings, but, but research bears this out. Psychologically speaking, we have so much going on um, that the, the ways we communicate benefits, the ways we talk about food, um, if we can do it in a way that brings it closer to us will have a greater opportunity to have people engage. Sure, absolutely. So, so when it comes to climate change, you know, and I put myself in this category as well, so many of us communicators talked about these invisible gases, these invisible greenhouse gases that would have an impact in 2020 and beyond, right? So um, 2020 now doesn't feel that far away, but we look at 2050, which is now the new kind of trajectory in which we talk about climate change, and it feels very distant. You're talking about something I can't see having an impact that I may or may not feel. And that, I think, was a real missed opportunity. The way we needed to frame climate change was to bring it up close um, into our homes, onto our plates, within our families. And we have seen as the impacts of climate change have come closer to um, you know, to perhaps more, um, you know, the global north. Uh, we've certainly seen these impacts in, in tropical areas for, for a long time, but as they creep closer, we see people respond in different ways. They may not use the language. They may not say it's because of global warming or it's because of climate change, but what they will say is things have changed in my lifetime. This isn't how, this isn't what the growing season used to look like. We didn't used to have these kinds of intense storms. Um, we didn't used to see such, such a prolonged period of drought, or we didn't see drought at all. So, so what we can do is ask people to look at the trajectory of their lives and start to ask questions. How is this different? How has it changed? Have, have things become better or have they become more challenging? And I think when we, when we start to reframe the kinds of situations we see, we depoliticize it. Unfortunately, we are uh, living in a time where we see science being extremely politicized and the idea of, of the acceptance of climate change becoming a partisan issue. Um, I disagree with this, and, and as most scientists do, as most people who have studied um, you know, climate change do, but, but for the group of people who are questioning, who, who um, are, are climate skeptics or who uh, don't believe in climate change, I think we can pose these questions in a different way. And we can simply say, so what's happening? What do you see? Um, are things the same? And, and if they have changed, have they changed for the better?
waste. Food waste breaks my heart. Um, to know that people are hungry in a, in a time when we have such abundance. We currently generate enough calories to feed everyone on the planet today and the population we anticipate by 2050. But the losses come because of a lack of infrastructure, because of losses on farm, or because we throw food away. Um, you know, 40% of food is thrown away in the United States, 30% is lost or thrown away globally. And, and there's so many small changes we could make that could have such a dramatic effect. Uh, changing these kinds of expiration dates that we see, simply reducing portion size, and and creating a culture where it's not okay to throw away food. You know, it's not okay to throw garbage on the ground, but yet it seems to be acceptable to, to throw food away. And we say it's because, uh, you know, we're, we're worried about our health, but of course we see now, you know, one in three adolescents is obese. We see more people dying in the world due to diseases related to being overweight or obese rather than being underweight. Um, the quality of the food has dropped so much as embedded in the idea that food is cheap and, and therefore disposable. And I would add to this, I put this in a very big umbrella of you giving me one, <laughs> one magic, you know, one magic wand to change one thing, which is waste. Um, you know, waste is embedded in this idea that we don't have enough food to, to feed people. Because if we can reallocate some of this food, as a recent study shows, we could feed hungry people. And what that means is this industrialized system and the narrative that um, we have to grow food in this cheap, industrialized way in order to food people gets upended. We don't need this system. We know this because of the kinds of calories that we generate now. We know this because of the way foods are created. But I think if we can upend the dominant, dominant narrative, and say um, this food that is being wasted can be reallocated, can be uh, shifted in a way that can feed hungry people, we really will put that, that story to rest.